This is week five of the fall trimester. So this week I finished up my figure painting, so that marks the halfway point through the trimester. The figure paintings are five weeks long, and we finish it up Friday, kind of. Matt said he might hire Maddie, the model, to come in on a Saturday, but I'm not sure if that's gonna happen or not, so I'm calling it done-ish now, I guess. <laughs> So this week, it's all about finishing up the painting, and the whole time Matt has been really talking to me a lot about painting technique, about leaving a brush stroke down and not smearing it or over blending it too much, but being confident in paint strokes. So I was trying this and two things were happening. Either I was leaving the paint strokes down, but they were looking too choppy, like there wasn't enough transitions and paint strokes next to each other were just too contrasty or harsh which means not enough transitions, so things weren't looking unified. Or, because things were looking choppy, then I would start blending things together and mixing paint on the canvas, so that was kind of giving the over-blended, smeary look, which was kind of making colors in certain areas either be chalky or get muddy and just not looking very attractive. And I was frustrated, so I was talking to him about this and why this was happening. And I showed him how I had been mixing my palette, which I talked about in my last video. And here's an image of what it looked like. So I would mix every everything into rows like this, having, you know, rows of purple, oranges, reds, greens, and it would just be a value scale of the basic colors. And my teacher stressed me to always make, make my mixtures from life that day. And so I thought I was doing that, so I would have those mixtures, which stayed pretty consistent between the, the rows of those basic colors with the value scale, but if, for example, if the light was more gray and Maddie looked more gray from the light, I would just gray down those colors, and then if she was more vibrant, I would just saturate the colors more. But Matt said, instead of mixing up a palette like that, which I'm just like almost making the colors of her skin tone formulaic, instead I should be mixing specific colors for the specific areas of her body. And it just clicked then, like, of course I should be doing that. Because if I was doing what I was doing before, with kind of having the formula of those colors, it would be impossible, really, to apply just a value scale of green, oranges, blues, purples all over her entire body. Because, for example, I can find green all over her body, but the green that I find on her shoulder is probably going to be more vibrant than the green on her arms, probably going to be more like of a brownish green, and maybe the green on her foot is going to be more like purplish green that's grayer. And so I think why my painting technique was either looking too choppy and harsh or the opposite of over blending everything and things kind of getting muddy was because not how I was literally handing the paint from brush to canvas, but was rather my mixtures that was messing it up. And so to fix this, I worked on Maddie's arm in the painting. And it's basically just different browns. There's some red browns, purple browns, green browns, some brighter ones and some dark ones. Some are more saturated and some are more grayed and more neutral. And so I would be mixing colors on my palette with my palette knife and hold it up to the spot in the painting that I was going to be applying it to. And if it wasn't right, I would just keep on mixing. And um, I spent a lot more time mixing for an area and really adjusting it and then putting it on my canvas and adjusting my mixtures. So uh, my mixtures were really specific to the actual part that I was painting. And saying that out loud, that totally makes sense that you would be doing that instead of trying to guess with making one value scale of browns to fit the whole entire painting. And one mental trick that I was doing when I was mixing colors this way of uh, making specific mixtures for specific areas of her body is to picture the painting as its own world. And that's because, especially for me, I'm using a limited palette, so I just have black, white, cadmium red light, and yellow ochre. And those four colors, you can get pretty convincing skin tones with it, for sure, but with those colors, also, it's going to look different slightly than life. I won't be able to get the exact same colors that I'm seeing from life. So when I would make my mixture, have it on my palette knife, and I'd hold it up to the spot in the painting that I was going to be applying it to, I would look at the model's arm and see the color, like like a reddish-brown color that I saw, and then I'd look at the my painting and make sure that the palette knife was making the proper adjustment in my painting compared to the other relative colors in my painting. And I forgot to take a picture of the palette that I'm now mixing, which is completely different each day with working on different areas of the painting, or it just changes pretty drastically 
from when I'm seeing like if the lights changing the colors or anything like that but for the next painting that I'm going to be starting on Monday which I'll be doing a transfer drawing for the first week so there'll be a week gap before I actually start painting um, I'll try to remember and take a picture of my palette but so the video before where I was talking about um, the rows of colors that I do, I'm not going to do that anymore because it's more formulaic and I like what I'm doing now which is more situational. And overall this painting has just been uh, a pretty big struggle for me. But I did figure out a lot of things, I definitely learned a lot of things, but I didn't get it to the resolve that I wanted to. And I would always try and make the painting that I'm working on now better than my last one always trying to push the bar higher. And this is the first time that my piece didn't follow that. And in fact, I think it's actually worse than my last two paintings. And I'm not discouraged, it's kind of a downer though. But I did learn so much working on this painting, but I'm really excited to start the next one and apply everything that I've learned on the next painting so I can just make the next one as great as I can. For my cast, I'm still working on the transfer drawing. I put the eye shapes on the babies and doing that just brought so much life to the transfer drawing, which is really exciting to see. And I'm still working out the exact placement of everything. Working big like this, I'm finding it challenging to really judge distance as well. Uh, I like to be far enough back from my painting that I can see, take in the whole image without having to scan my eyes across it. And I can't really do that with this painting because my uh, studio doesn't go far, I can't step far enough away from it. But I'm sure when I graduate and leave Ravenswood, I'm probably going to be in a small studio for a while, so this is probably just good practice for that. And then it's also a challenge working with, usually I'm working with one figure, and this cast has four. So Mott just had a trick for getting all of the babies in place, specifically the heads, is to almost imagine, or you could imagine the heads as beads on a necklace and seeing how they fall in relation to each other. It's just like a mental trick. And so looking at my drawing and making sure that the baby head beads, sounds really weird, um, are like dangling and in the same placement as the actual cast is. And like always, I will break up an image and then I'll re-simplify it. And re-simplifying it, trying to make one light shape and make it look like there's one shadow shape. And I know all the shadow shapes are not connected, so you could say that there's like 10 shadow shapes or 20 shadow shapes on it, but um, I'm focusing on trying to make the shadow look so unified that it looks like it is one shadow shape even though some are disjointed from it. And that's the trick with simplifying it and um, if you can do that with making it look like it's one shadow shape and one light shape, that means the structure is really really strong so I'm still working on uh, getting it to look like that. And then I still have more work that I want to do and make sure that this is really solid and a beautiful drawing in and of itself before I transfer it to the painting so I'm still plugging away on this one.